Louder with Crowder Studios, protected exclusively by Walther. And Hopper. $16 million. $15 million. $15 million, $12 million. These are the salaries of Jimmy Fallon, Stephen Colbert, Jimmy Kimmel, Conan O'Brien, individually. Trevor Noah, last I, I read, made about $4 million in 2015. Trevor Noah currently has 22 writers. Jimmy Kimmel has 14 writers. The Young Turks received $20 million in 2017 in funding. And uh, I say this to you today to express the importance and the gratitude we have for everyone in Mug Club. Listen, we're in the same ballpark as a, a lot of these shows because of you the viewers and the listeners. But just as certainly, we rely on you and Mug Club to continue growing this show. We've never received $20 million in funding from a foreign caliphate. Uh, we run this entire program budget on a small fraction of the other late night hosts' salaries. That includes all of our salaries, mine included, advertising, production costs for hidden camera stings, all of it. And up until this year, we never had the luxury of 25 writers. We had one, uh, and now I'm fortunate enough to have uh, Brodigan helping along, along uh, with our friend Pentelis and uh, sometimes your good friend Owen Benjamin part-time. Late Night has ignored you, but we hear you. But because Ladder with Crowder is entirely independent, we can't do this show without you. We can't rely on social media monetization, and of course we can't expect the big boys in media to hear us. So please join at ladderwithcrowder.com slash mug club. Try it for seven days free. Get the daily show, this wonderful hand-etched mug, uh, and ensure that the laughs, the information, and the impact continues. On a happy note, through your support of Mug Club, we just wanted to let you know we are now hiring new people as a part of our family here. Um, Grant, someone who's worked with us here for a while, has had some... Uh, personal health issues. He's not going to be here full time. We love you, Grant, and uh, hopefully he'll be coming back. Uh, I, I know he will be coming back with some freelance work, but we do have uh, some full time positions available for uh, a director slash producer, a videographer, studio tech, and a production assistant slash associate producer for in the field kind of packages, reporting, hidden camera uh, work. And eventually we'll be looking for a, a showrunner, senior producer, so that uh, I can find some time to focus more on content and my health. But right now for the full job descriptions, go to loudworthcredit.com slash jobs. And uh, because we're a very small, lean team, please understand we can't hire everybody. We cannot respond to everybody. Um, our team is about the quarter of the size of Trevor Noah's just writing staff. So we're going to have to go through all of these applications. And if you're not a fit with the experience, just wait until next time. We will be hiring again. So uh, again, please join at ladderwithcrowder.com slash mug club and apply at ladderwithcrowder.com slash jobs. Good luck to everyone. Enjoy the show. Every day when you watch our YouTube feed, every video that you see, has been demonetized just for you. And I say, hey, you two can go screw yourself today. All the censorship's real gay. And this next word has to be It's a simple message, and it comes from the heart. Big Ted can itself. That would be a great place to start. And I say, hey, you two can go screw yourself today. All your censorship's real gay And this next word has to be Go de-platform all of these Go de-platform all of these Hey! SJW! Hey! Uh. Know what I'm doing oh, with this. If this were no. a John Woo film, that would have been in really slow mo and the <laughs> film would have been three hours long. I don't know. Does John Woo still make films? We have uh, G. Morgan Jr. with us. What's the wine of the day? Wine sir? of the day, Le Cadran. Okay, it's I don't care. Oh, Corner Black Hair is here. It doesn't up? really matter all that much because we have real black people here, according to 23 no. and Me, the Hodge twins. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, I'm only 54% black. <laughs> You're 54% black? And just made yeah. Darn. And well, are, are, I assume you are also 54% black, unless there's something happened with a mailman. <laughs> 53. <laughs> With 53.8. <laughs> oh, you stole some of his DNA. You guys have some shows coming up, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Where are you going? We're going to Detroit. Not really Detroit. We're going to Royal Oak. <laughs> hey, we're going to Detroit. <laughs> I don't fit in good there. You do not. No. <laughs> we go to Phoenix, Arizona, and Chicago. This yeah. Month. And nice. you have any channels at Conservative Twins? Yeah, on, on YouTube, YouTube, Conservative Twins. And hold on a second. 
just been informed in my ear that it's been demonetized. We have uh, Gavin McInnes <laughs> yep. on the show yep. today, and we'll be talking about nice. why Trump will be reelected. I really think he's going to be reelected. So that brings me to the question of the day. Uh, what would you say the odds are of President Trump being reelected? Do you think it depends on his opponent? Who in the field, I guess, do you see now or who could emerge in the next two years do you think will beat him? I'm curious to hear what you think. Um, we'll talk about that Nobody. a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, leading the news, of course, <laughs> is the current political drama in Virginia, which now includes the attorney general and a congressman, uh, all the while there are still continued calls for Governor Northam to resign. And I believe the governor, if I'm not mistaken, is actually holding a press conference oh. to address the latest controversy oh, nice. okay. right now. Yeah. yeah, we go to it now. All right, now everyone, let's uh, settle down. Uh, first question, yes. Yeah, what do you say to people asking for your resignation, Governor Northam? Well, you're always going to have critics. And all I can say is that that definitely, in the pictures I've said on the record, was not a me! And I'd like to move on to much more press. Yeah. Are you doing Michael Jackson again? Okay, guys, you got to stop with the gotcha journalism. Here, it's what's dividing our country. I stand before you today an honest man and totally focused on the man in the mirror. Yeah, he's definitely doing Michael Jackson. really racist. All right, guys, listen, you have to stop lobbing the accusation of racism. Okay, that's what we're facing here in politics. It's divisive, and I'm telling you that I don't care if you are black or white. No further questions. <laughs> oh, one. Almost yeah. seems like he's a little tone deaf. <laughs> little <laughs> bit. So oh, let's good. recap that. This is, by the way, your home state, <laughs> yeah, Virginia. Good old, good old Virginia. Good old Virginia. Good old, yeah. Usually good. I think people think West Virginia when they think about the things that I'm going. No. Yeah. Just Virginia much. regular. West Virginia. <laughs> to recap, we have what the uh, Northam, obviously, blackface photo. Yeah. The yep. attorney general Same. announced that he too wore blackface at a party oh. once. Mm. <laughs> he felt compelled to announce it, apparently. Announce uh, serious allegations, for those who don't know, of, of rape against the lieutenant governor oh boy. Uh, oh, in yeah. 2004, which were ignored, by the, by the way, from a Democratic congressman for over a year. We go now live to a recently called Emergency Virginia State Democrat Convention. Hmm. Jim Surveyor. It, re it really is. It's absolutely a dumpster fire. Who, whoever is the next in the line of succession, like if these guys go out, is just sitting there waiting for the other shoe to drop. Because there's, what, three people in line right now in succession. The, the governor, lieutenant governor, and yeah. then well, what was the other person you said, the AG uh, or something like that? Somewhere is Robert Byrd saying, so oh. you're saying there's, there's a yeah, chance. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but it's great. It's an absolute dumpster fire. I did not politics. think of Virginia as this racist of a place. Did you guys grow up with this? It's oh, a, man, it's like... That's like they used to yeah. have KKK uh, parades through our city. Yeah, yeah. it's like once in a year. the front yard you see all these blackface mannequins, little statues. Yeah, yeah. really? Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but you guys are in your like th you're in your thirties. Uh, no. <laughs> oh really? Well, I guess I wish that was in my thirties. Well, black uh, don't crack, especially yeah. when it's shoe polished on. Uh, in a more wholesome story. A three-year-old. Is everyone okay? Are we okay? We're, here? Yeah, we're still yeah. all right. Yeah, you could probably beat me up. I found out before the show we weigh the exact same. D, really? Yeah, but they look much better. Uh, a three-year-old boy was lost in the woods, and he apparently hung out with a bear for oh two days. This comes from Sky News. Mm -hmm. Casey Hathaway was found by search and rescue teams in North Carolina after people heard him calling for his mother. Uh, the boy claims that the bear helped him forage for berries, learn how to hibernate, and gave him the inside skinny on NASA's fake moon landing. Yeah, oh. so it seems as though <laughs> oh, wait, the kid wait, is uh, see, in the see, know. Hold, hold on, I think, we're, I think we're getting a call. What's that? Oh. Is that I, I don't know why people are able to call in during the show. Crowder, why don't you answer uh, my phones? I've called you like 80 times. No, that's not. Call me back, dude. What the fuck? Uh, yeah, okay. yeah, no. I'm cutting him off. I'm cutting him off. Oh, my gosh. We have to Can't move on him. as though this show anymore. is going really well. Right now, we're turning uh, to our Eye on India. You guys spend a lot of India in there, India Hodge hmm. Twins? You guys been there? Never been. <laughs> <laughs> Probably a good it's not a real hot spot for you guys have to you, go uh, to. Have you, we got a hot uh, fan base on Facebook, New Delhi. Uh, really? Going out there. They got ISIS out there, don't they? <laughs> I don't know. Look at the horse twins. Just chop their head off. <laughs> <laughs> Just one show and done. You know. <laughs> I don't, do you have a lot of Indian fans? You said that your yeah. fan base yeah. is significant. Really? Yeah. yeah, it was the one Indian guy here in Dallas who was so annoying. <laughs> horse <You> got twins. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from India. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love you guys. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. That was funny. It was, oh, you saw him, right? Yeah, I yeah. saw him. Like, uh, I am from India. I love you. But he kept, like, ragging on you the whole show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. He was giving you crap, or was he supporting you, Heckley? He was supporting us. He was That's supporting. sometimes more yeah, annoying, because you can't yeah, shut him support. down, because yeah. people think you're a jerk. He's like, I just love what you are doing. I think 
that's great for the country. Please continue. And you're like, and I will. Yes, please do. I am in support right here. You need anything, please stop. I will not stop. I am here for you. Okay. Yep, that was All good night. Good because I like you. You are the one who looks like he knows the deal. Can I offer you uh, this uh, thing of magic that I have here? They bargain a lot. <laughs> one thing I've noticed with Indian people is uh, you agree on a price, and then they decide to negotiate. Oh, really? I don't know why. That's yeah. really true? It's a cultural thing, huh. and I don't like it. Doesn't I mean, mean I don't like Indians. I just don't like that component of the Indian people. There you go. Uh, so an Indian man is suing <laughs> his parents. True story, because he didn't consent to being born. Ralph oh, gosh. Raphael Samuel is a so-called child-free advocate who believes children shouldn't be made to suffer life and thinks parents don't have the right to give birth if a child <laughs> has not agreed to it. Mm -hmm. Well, don't worry, Mr. Samuel. Governor Northam has your back. I think you two are on the same page. <laughs> yeah, he's... <laughs> That's extending abortion a little far. I don't think so. Late term. If Late it's... Term. They will have a discussion about Midlife it. Midlife abortion? Really? <laughs> midlife. <laughs> it's, come on. That's what's going to happen in Virginia. No more midlife crisis. Just no. mid midlife abortion. Uh, finally, in another story, before we get to Donald Trump, why he'll be reelected, the new emojis were announced on Tuesday. If you'll follow mm, this by no. the, uh, the Unicode Consorti Consortium is a thing. Uh, and wow. they claimed that they were focusing mainly on accessibility and representation this is a quote from them. The next batch features an array of inclusion-themed symbols like a woman and a man in a wheelchair, several new variations of people holding hands, and a period emoji. Whoa. Yeah, okay. that's, a real, that's, an, that's a real thing, what the period emoji. Like? Well, apparently it needs to be celebrated along with other, every other bodily function. No. So every time mm -hmm. I yeah. drop a deuce now, I'm going to <laughs> send a text with a picture and a smiley face. Uh, actually, in exclusive, we have some of the yet-to-be-released emojis from Apple, which brings us to this week's 7 Plus 1. Forgot the fun in the chamber! People often forget the they one do. in the chamber. Every time. Every time. By the way, yeah. that's the new Walther that is made by Walther. Ooh. Walther, they were licensing it for a while. Now they're made in-house in, uh, in Fort Smith, Arkansas. Have nice. you been following the emoji story, you guys? Yeah. So we have a few, we have, we have a few <laughs> months here. Let's, uh, let's, have you, let's have you read uh, number seven and six, respectively. Uh, the number seven emoji we have uh, exclusive access to is, is, is what, Keith and or Kevin? Transgender. It's ma'am. Yeah, that's a transgender oh, emoji. My. You can send oh, that. Oh, wait a minute, I missed it. <laughs> No, you have to watch the no. replay. Yeah. Uh, number Bugs. six is the uh, is the President Trump emoji is one that's going on. Yeah, this one oh, is actually going to be is. widely oh, popular. I like, I like that, that one. one. And then one, just so the Hodge twins don't have to say it, is uh, that this was not exa exactly controversial, not mm. especially controversial, because yeah. it's the not Muhammad emoji. Yeah, very clear that is ooh, not Muhammad. Ooh, not, 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 not. It's capitalized. No, no it's not, because Muhammad. here's the actual Muhammad emoji. It's been around for a very long time. Yeah. <laughs> it's been around. <laughs> The Jews lied about everything after Abraham, but there is no hate here. <laughs> Love. It's an entire Peace. religion based on the Jews lied. Yes, they got All of off. them lied. The hand under the thigh was the other guy. <laughs> but I love you, Hutch Twins. I am here for you tonight. <laughs> uh, number four, uh, an emoji yet to be released, uh, people are really proud of, is the pro-choice emoji. Oh. Yeah, it's coming down the pipe. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, uh, really quick, we'll skim along this one. Number three is the cancer emoji. But that one makes sense. That oh, seems like okay. it was a good, uh, good yeah. selection. Number two, the Pocahontas emoji is one. That Accurate. Yeah. <laughs> Get your Texas bar. Uh, and the number one is uh, the official emoji of the state of Virginia. This is one that's yet to be released. Bam. Bam. Accurate. <laughs> oh, nice. There and the go. plus one that you forgot in the chamber, of course, is this salute emoji to Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Yeah, it seems Ooh. as though that one's self explanatory. This has been this week's 7 plus 1! You forgot the fun in the chamber! Uh, yeah. Every time. Hold German on. voices just make black people laugh. Oh, wait, wait, oh, hold on, I'm sorry. We're getting another one. We're getting, uh, what was yeah. that? Are we getting another call? Yeah. Hey, Crowder, it's me. Sorry about spiraling earlier. It turns out it was my bad. I was, uh... Okay. I was calling another guy on my phone. My buddy Chowder. I don't believe that. No, it's right okay. next to Crowder. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not um, Want to grab beers? No, no I'm, I'm not exactly sure. I think he's kind more of a white claw guy. What's anyway. the bear thing going on over there? He's just like taking it. Uh, you know what? No one really knows. Um, <laughs> hey, by the way, the winner, I should say, I have this in front of me. I have it written down because people oh. said, don't forget to announce this winner of last week's trivia contest is Katie know? Reynolds. Nice. Congratulations. Katie Ronaldo, 88. And so you and, uh, oh, uh, that was the answer. Oh. Was it about Ralph Macchio? Yeah. I don't remember oh, what yeah. the question was, but you win a free t-shirt uh, or Ranger panties or uh, item of your choosing. And I think an autographed uh, picture. A little something. From Smooth Manny. No, from Smooth Manny. I don't know how this is a prize. Honestly, like, I'm surprised yeah. that you enter the contest. We'll give you the stuff. But, but you do. It's crap. Um, <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so the segment I want to get into before oh uh, now, gosh. people are saying we're going to talk about the Green Deal, well, the Green New Deal. I didn't have oh, time to read through all of it before it's insanity, the, this though. show. <laughs> it does seem pretty insane, and, and it does lead me to the point that I do want to discuss tonight: why I believe that President Trump is going to be reelected. And the main reason for this is that Democrats keep giving him gifts. So I was, well, how, I, they, they, they wonder like how he won in the first place. You hear that a lot. Yeah. Like how did Donald Trump? How could he have possibly won? And how could he possibly win again? I'll tell you exactly how. <laughs> The left continues to give this man gifts. It, it, he really is. There's like a Chauncey Gardner effect. He's not necessarily doing everything right. They're just doing yeah. everything wrong. Yeah. He looks brilliant by comparison. Oh, yeah. uh, so we're going to go through four top. Do you think he's going to win re-election? Oh, yeah. You guys? God, I hope so. You going to vote for him? <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Did you vote for him the first time? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I didn't I vote expect. last time I was, got caught up in those polls on CNN. Yeah. I actually believed it. <laughs> <laughs> So awesome. just, I thought we was going to keep that to ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> but, and, oh but, you, but, you but I'll definitely for, vote next time. Uh-huh. Yeah, okay, good. I'm gonna make I, I, my wife I, and unless the polls vote. come out. That's a, lot, that's a lot of people, though. A lot of people who didn't necessarily pull the lever for Trump, I think, are more emboldened the next yeah. time around. Oh, and I know you guys yeah. said that you voted for Obama at least the first time, right? The first yeah. time, second time, Mitt Romney. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh. That's surprising. What? Not for me. Because <laughs> he's like the whitest guy ever. He's pretty white. He is yeah. as white. I mean, yeah. He's Utah white, and that's white. Yeah. I mean, like, if, 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 <laughs> there's like, there's white, there's Larry Bird white, and then there's Utah, Utah. white. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, for some reason, Larry Bird was just great at basketball. So it worked. he, he it worked threw off him. the whole yeah. bell curve. So I think, do think that the State of the Union, which occurred this week, showcased exactly what I'm talking about, just how far left the DNC has gone. And by the way, this is something that's important to note. 70, per, uh, 70 is it 76? 76. 76 percent of americans approved of the speech what's really bad for democrats is that 81 percent of independents approved of the speech i think we have overlays from this from 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 yougov and uh the more that the the left continues to push their their agenda toward the left the democrats i should say pushing their agenda toward the left the more likely it seems that these independent voters who who everyone said trump just has this ceiling right he has this ceiling and it's his base well the truth is his base actually those are the people who had the biggest problems with president trump we'll get into those in a second it seems like the independents actually the people in the middle are really starting to thaw on the guy yeah absolutely they're starting to come around in huge numbers i've never seen numbers like that for independents that's the coveted group of people that everybody goes after in elections they try to rile their base up and then they try to get independence when that high of a percentage of independents agree with your state of the union that was never supposed to happen in the first place (laughs) yeah you're doing something really wrong on the other side i don't really wrong 81 percent of independents (laughs) agree on anything no they're independent for a reason. Yes, exactly. <laughs> they so. should ju- independence should just read difficult. Yes, yeah, very difficult. Yeah. <laughs> and you get eighty one percent of them to support the reality show guy. Yeah. Like, think about this for a second. How badly must you screw up that the guy who is literally trademarked, you're fired, yeah. is beating the crap out of you? <laughs> the second lowest polling politician in US history to run for president. And you pick the person below him. I just I, I don't know how this happened. So I think uh, let's go through kind of four examples. And I think this is one that's really important recently: uh, late-term abortion. So here's a clip where President Trump uh, called for legislation to end the late-term abortions, and he mentions Northam's discussion of killing babies after birth. This is an important clip for people to see. Here you go. Yeah. To defend the dignity of every person, I am asking Congress to pass legislation to prohibit the late term abortion of children who can feel pain in the mother's womb. There are people who refuse to stand at that. Think about this for a second. You're an independent, you're watching, he's going, let's at least agree to to stop babies that could feel pain being ripped apart in the womb. Okay, right? And then they're like, no. (laughs) You're going to sit on your hands for that? Yeah. Do you have any idea how the optics look? And here's something that's really important. I think maybe you guys aren't necessarily, because you weren't really like political junkies in the last election, mm-hmm. and I know you'll vote in the next election, but Trump, by the way, was pro-choice yeah. up until yeah. he ran as a Republican effectively. And conservatives were really le- they were really leery of him oh, yeah. because of that, right? Yeah, we didn't Remember think that, he was conservative. They didn't think he was conservative. No. And so Donald Trump found himself in a pickle in the primaries, uh, particularly because he had to appeal to his base, right. the conservatives. Right. He had to prove to them that he was pro-gun, that he was pro-life, yeah. while still appeasing moderates. And that's hard to do when they think that you can't win over either of them. Now, again, the Democrats have given him a gift in that he can, do a, he can now appeal to his pro-life base and even to moderates who just don't want to see babies being born alive killed. All he has to say is, hey, hey, a 40-week-old baby being chopped to the head bad. And he wins exactly. everyone who's not Cortez. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's all that's required. 
Think about that for a second. Yeah. You, All the Democrats had to do was say, hey, most Americans are relatively pro-choice because it's a term that we created to trick them and some of them are stupid. So let's go with that. And instead they said 40 week abortions, right? 40 weeks and Donald Trump was, I'd call your bluff. Shh. <laughs> well, I mean, all you had to do was not kill babies once they were born. I mean, if you had drawn the line a little bit further back and just not gone that far, a lot of this may not have come up. Right. But the minute that you start saying stuff like the Virginia governor said, and then you pass bills in New York, and then Tran says what she says, you've just riled up an entire base of voters. You did not want this to be the issue. No, exactly. And they it, couldn't it, stop. No, they couldn't I'm stop. Kind of stupid it's, on it's, this. Why would you have to kill a forty year, a forty week? You don't. Exactly. Baby. Yeah. Why? Because you don't want it. Yeah. And you know what's crazy? My uh, my daughter was born premature. She was uh, eight months. Yeah. Well, eight months. Yeah. I eight think months. I'm yeah. not entirely sure. I think the viability after 25 weeks is over 50% now. Well, mm. and after 20 weeks, it's still viable. The percentage goes down, but it's still possible for somebody oh, yeah, to live still, after still 20 weeks. Yeah. yeah the I mean, argument it's, of it's viability, oh, is, it's, it's like uh, the left is on an island and it's shrinking. It's yeah. kind of like the island that Al Gore described only. It's kind of like the Florida <laughs> Al Gore described only. It never really yeah. happened. Yeah. That, yeah. that The tide is just rising. They have less and less land because babies are becoming more viable as technology uh, progresses. So they yeah. have less and less of an argument. Well, and, and, and this is a very horrible thing to happen, right? You don't want a bill coming in New York like this that allows this for any period of time. But I think it's also, it, it happens to have a huge silver lining because it's one of the best things. It's waking people up around oh, yeah. the country to the horrors of abortion yeah. who may have just kind of swept it under the rug as a woman's right to choose and kind of bought that line. Now they have to deal with the reality of post-birth, if it's a botched abortion, or abortion right up until delivery. And even That's now what we're weeks, talking about. The, the, the beauty of it is, and I don't mean the beauty of it, but uh, the situation is... Um People see 40 weeks, they go, well, hold on a second, 40, that's really extreme. Where am I okay with abortion? Right. And they go back and go, well, hold on, 25 weeks, that's in a lot of states. What, 25 weeks? Yeah, yeah right. And they are dumbfounded. A yeah. lot of people think it's plan B. They think no. it's some woman who's going in, there was some incest or rape that occurred, which is a very, very small minority of cases. And instead they're going, wait, people are killing these babies at 25 yeah. weeks old yeah. and this is legal? And now they're pushing for it to be legal with this broad health exception everywhere else? All it requires is anyone who is against the killing of a 30, 40, 25 week old baby. Now Donald Trump has won on the yeah. issue of abortion. Congratulations, Democrats. No Republican has won public appeal. <laughs> on the issue of abortion in probably two decades. Yeah. Close a cool man. It's, <laughs> it's, it's a, no, that's what they called Ben Carson. And oh. he, by the way, was not upset oh. about it. I think that I like it says ben. the immaturity. Uh, people would call me coon man. Which sounds like a cool <laughs> superhero if I had claws. Um, if he had a, a larger voice, he would be in office right now. If he, if he had, had a voice. Yeah. But yeah. you know what's funny? Voices. Have you ever seen Ben Carson's uh, house for sale? No. It was in uh, Florida or Vegas? Dude's a pimp. <laughs> you see, like, it was nothing but like gold and all these like little angels by the bathtub. It was like a Russian bathhouse. This is Ben Carson's bathroom. Yeah. He's letting his money do the talking for him because he can't. I, I like to see myself in a white view mirror when I take it down. So um, it was bizarre. If you look at the placing this. of the mirrors, it was opposite the toilet. Like he wants to watch his paperwork. I have huh. no idea. So another example here <laughs> where the left has lost all ground is uh, pushing for, for open borders. So in the State of the Union, Trump mentioned ICE. Rescuing women and children yeah. from sex traffickers. Watch what, uh, I, I mean, Ocasio Nina Pinta Santa Maria Cortez uh, refuses to clap for, for this. Here's the clip. More than 1,500 sadistic traffickers have been put behind bars. This is just like, that's, everyone is clapping. Yes. You should be. Look, you got people on the right and the left. Wait, wow. what? Stone Cold Face. Should How should I? Should I? I'll get out. I'll get out. I'll get out. I'll get out. That's insane. I'll get up but, for wow, the se wow. for stopping sex hit? slavery. I don't like him, but I'll go up. Like that's you've just handed him a gift. By the way, they were wearing white for women's rights. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta clap if you're wearing white for women's rights. Alexandria like Ocasio Cortez, who are you wearing? I am wearing white for women's rights. Except all the underage hookers against their will. I'll see you at the halftime show. I cannot believe it. What rights do women uh, don't have that men do? Exactly. Well. Wearing white after Labor Day, I guess, yeah, in this case, but I know it's before Labor Day. Before. I'm not entirely oh, sure. Oh my gosh. And, and here's the thing, uh, not even talking about the sex trafficking, okay? That's yeah. one that, again, if you just, you have to play the game in politics. Everyone knows this a little bit. We don't like it, but yeah. when someone says, 
ending sex trafficking. Even if you go, well, hold on a second, I know that Cortez, when she's talking about ending yeah. sex trafficking, is actually attached to the Green New Deal bill, and that's actually mm -hmm. about 70% tax, so right. I don't like it, but she did say end sex trafficking. All right, I'm gonna clap. <laughs> this right. the optics, exactly. and I'll talk about yeah. it later. They didn't clap at that. But if you go even further into the issue, a new CBS poll shows that 72% of Americans agreed with Trump specifically on immigration anyway. Here's them saying it. Just in uh, from our CBS News uh, instant poll here following the president's State of the Union, 76% of speech watchers said they approved of what they heard. Hmm. That's, I'm very surprised. That's a large percentage there. Hmm. I'm very surprised that any of these percentages are true. That's why I had well, to play that clip well, so you would believe that I'm not just saying it. <laughs> well, she's, she's been portrayed as like this strong, independent Latina woman, and that's why we hate her. And when that happens, she's like, hey, um, guys, do we do we clap at this? Because that yeah. sounds good. Uh, I'm not yeah. really sure. Hold, hold on. We'll stand up, but not, not clap. Okay. Yes. But I'm independent, sure. and I do my I'm own sure. thing. By the way, the, the funniest thing I thought, Trump was making a comment. He said one in three of these women that are being brought across the border are actually raped or sexually assaulted in the process of coming across the border. And one of the, the fact-checking organizations says, well, that's partially true. It's actually 31%, oh not, not 33% precisely. <laughs> <laughs> you just lost the forest okay. for the trees, guys. Come on. Here's a, here, Let me just paint a picture for you. Just a moment here, okay? I'm trying to actually wrap my head around this. They fact <laughs> it's really him. hard to do. It's like when they fact check Donald Trump, where he said we we had burgers stacked a mile high at the White yeah. House. They're like, actually, he did not have burgers <laughs> stacked feet, a mile actually. high. As Three a matter feet. of fact, they were placed in more of a horizontal spread. Really, <laughs> one couldn't account for the vertical <laughs> metrics because of the buttons and depending on the temperature of the room. It's like you're a. <laughs> exactly. But think about this for a second, okay? The guy who said you could do whatever you want, you could grab by the and disgusted a whole nation now has the moral high ground because you've decided to vilify him because he's against sex trafficking and he had the number off by 2%. Yes. You've given him a gift. <laughs> Another and, one. And you couldn't possibly make it easier for him. Now everyone forgets about the grab by the and you go, actually, that 33% of people who are uh, raped when they try to get here against their will, it's 31%. You better get in line, President Trump. But all he needs to say is, you're a piece of shit. And they're like, you know what? I kind of am. Yeah, I'll yeah, just walk right. out this door here. I should almost be prioritizing the women who are being raped. <laughs> They don't call them snowflakes for nothing. <laughs> they do not. <laughs> and that guy looked like a snowflake with a toupee on. By the way, mm -hmm. hit uh, the notification bell if you're subscribed on YouTube because apparently our subscriptions might not show up in your box. Join Mug Club if you want the show yeah. every single day. Loudwithgutter.com slash Mug Club. And uh, subscribe. Rate us on iTunes. Yes. A lot of people are like, oh, yeah. I listen to the audio version. Yeah, that's a great way. Yeah, you can. Here's the uh, second example before we get to the prime example. Uh, the left, of course, is pushing socialism. This is another reason I think President Trump is going to, to win. They're outright pushing it. Remember when it used Huge. to be veiled? Yeah. Where they used to, like, when people said, we think that Barack Obama is kind of a socialist. Right, like, yeah. Socialism is actually, uh, it's a dog whistle. It's, it's the N-word is what <laughs> you mean. Yes. Remember when yes. they said that? It's like, yeah. no. It's no, no, not. we think he's a socialist. Like, by the way, there are people in, there are people like in Norway who are socialists too. They're not black at all. <laughs> They're actually like really white actually and really strong for some reason. We have no idea as to why yet. We're still running some genetic <laughs> testing. But we actually think that Barack Obama is like a Norwegian socialist. That's it. No. <laughs> Trump just said that we're never going to be a socialist country. And look at who refuses to applaud. Here you go. Socialism in our country. Yeah, boo. boo. America was founded on liberty and independence and not government coercion, domination, and control. We are born free. Hey, and wait, we for will it, stay wait for it. Free. Wait for it. Wait for it. Sounds good, freedom. Sounds good. Sounds Here great. it comes. Wait, wait, wait. Son of a bitch! <laughs> <laughs> oh, holy <laughs> They have a close-up! <laughs> I should have anticipated this and not planned poorly my afternoon nap! Cortez, where were you? You were my number two. I just like <laughs> that's just one of the best <laughs> zoom in close ups in the history <laughs> yeah. of presidential speeches. <laughs> <laughs> he, looks like, he looks like Grumpy Cat had sex with a crazier, older Grumpy Cat. <laughs> yeah, and Trump's the crazy, a boss. So awesome. He looked right at him when he said it, too. He did. He, did. <laughs> he knew that was a setup, and he's like, and camera two. Go. <laughs> <laughs> he greased the palms of one camera guy. Everyone yeah, at yeah. the executive yeah, level sure. at the networks, they don't like him. He's uh, like, hey, listen, camera operator number four, you know what to do. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, there's that point of my love. Um, <laughs> let's think about it. Current Democrat, the stars of the Democratic Party, Bernie Sanders uh, and Acacio, Nina Pinta, Santa Maria Cortez. These are the stars. Yeah. They're actual socialists. She actually thinks that she's going to pass some kind of 70% tax. I don't oh know. Gosh. She explained it somehow. The notion of socialism <laughs> to that particular regime, How you? what do you think about the president and why he did that? Well, I think, I think that he needs to do it because he feels like he feels himself losing on the issues. Every what? single she policy the other that, that, that right? we have adopted Ten and presented to the American public has been overwhelmingly popular, <laughs> even some with a majority of Republican voters supporting, what? What, supporting what we're talking about. When we talked about a 70% marginal tax rate on incomes uh, over $10 million, 60% of Americans approve it. No! What? 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 Just, a majority of Republicans support socialism. <laughs> What? I thought this was well known. Hey, you, person next to me, is this well, it's not well known? I don't know what I'm saying, Chris Matthews. <laughs> she probably went to Watts or something. <laughs> Does that, let's be honest here. Oh my gosh. Do we have to act like that sounds like an intelligent woman? No. Do we have to pretend? It's like, old. here's the thing, Nancy Pelosi doesn't sound like an idiot. I, I think she's wrong. I think yeah. she's the only person in politics who's proactively evil, but she doesn't sound like an idiot. <laughs> Hillary Clinton doesn't sound like an idiot. No. no. This girl sounds like a moron. <laughs> well, look, Trump says a lot of dumb stuff, and I think they went out and found the only person on the left that could possibly sound dumber and elected her to Congress as a 29-year-old bartender with no experience doing anything. Right. Yes. <laughs> They've got their man, hey, or woman in this I case. I could grab anyone by the p why is it buffalo wings if it's chicken? That's <laughs> <laughs> exactly. She's getting rid this of This is the best debate jokes. ever. <laughs> I think so too. Uh, <laughs> the thing about socialism, no matter how great you think the government is at giving you free stuff, uh, people still don't want higher taxes. Is that what the prank calls this week where we called black businesses? Yeah. They're like, I, would it make you more or less likely to support Governor Northam than he supports increased taxes? Mm, 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 mm. I don't want to pay more taxes. No, no, no. I want like the opposite. Of that. <laughs> I feel like this this could be like a spoof. Like Donald Trump at some point wrote a playbook that said, Oh, if they're gonna beat me, here are all the things that you can do to beat me. And he's like laughing with his cronies behind the scenes. It's right. like they've picked the absolute worst ideas possible to win an election, and they've done all of them in it's two glorious. months. It's, it's like glorious. a guy listen, I, I think Donald Trump is bright enough, but I don't I don't think he's as brilliant as obviously the, his diehard supporters do. Yeah. I think sometimes he's just been given these gifts. Like I think this is the equivalent to reverse psychology actually yes. working. Hey, hey, Cortez. Hey, the one thing you got, the one thing, okay, the only thing that'll take me down. All right, listen. You know what? I'm not gonna say. It. <laughs> <laughs> okay, listen. If you suggest a 70 percent tax, I've said too much. <laughs> and she's like, what? She's oh, like, guys, I know how to kill Samson. <laughs> <laughs> I wrap his hands in ropes. <laughs> and he's like Samson. Exactly. He gives her the wrong way to kill him, and he yeah. wakes up and he destroys the ropes. He's like, yeah. She's like, oh my god, what happened? Why yeah. would you lie to me, Samson? That's exactly what it is. And then for I some swear. reason, Samson told was it Deli the last one? Yes. He she gave her the real okay. way to remove his strength, cut his hair. When she did exactly what he told her the first two times, like how did he not put it together? Strong and dumb. Sorry. Yeah, strong and dumb. <laughs> <laughs> strong and dumb, Samson. Uh, I think the greatest example, of course, of the gifts that the left has been they've been giving Donald Trump, and I hope they do it again in 2020. Is um they ran Hillary Clinton in. A general Aww. election. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Likely the one person Donald Trump was capable of beating at that time. <laughs> Trump pulled very badly for people who forgot this leading up to the election. Almost every single pollster yeah. got it wrong because he was polling so badly. And he's been receiving nothing but hostile media coverage since. Here's the thing. The choice in 2020 is very different from 2016. You were not a Trump guy. Nope. And I was not a Trump guy in the primaries. No, we argued about it. We argued about it because I remember saying, well, listen, if he does win, you know, he's going to be the guy at that point. But I, 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 it wasn't my guy. I liked Carly yeah. Fiorina. I liked Ted Cruz. Yeah. Uh, and I pretty much liked everyone not named... <laughs> Who was it? Well, yeah, Jeb Bush, obviously, or John Kasich. Sorry, Kasich, I was trying yeah. to think. Yeah, Low Jeb energy. Bush. I was like, no way, and John no. Kasich, just because. Like, I mean, that guy's just a wiener. Um, <laughs> it's just like there's nothing personal. I just see him and I go. You ever see someone who makes you just go? Uh, uh, Who's the guy from Ohio? I guess. Yeah. Oh, how about Little Marco? Do you like Little Marco? I actually didn't mind Little Marco, <laughs> but John Kasich has that haircut where he looks like a like he looks like a bird caught in an oil spill. You know what I mean? Where he just like <laughs> I'm talking about after BP, the Crisco yes, was in the water yes. and the birds just come out like, Aah! and you're like, it's John Kasich. Um, <laughs> We got some John Kasichs here. We're washing them off. We're washing them off. We're we're, we got some John Kasichs, and we're washing them off with Dawn. <laughs> <laughs>
I don't know what happened here. I have no idea where we're going. Uh, so the choice, though, in 2020 is very different from 2016. 2016, yeah. a lot of people thought that both Hillary and Trump were kind of taking us toward a cliff. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Ben Shapiro summarized it as, as uh, though the concerns of many, by the way, he said the fear was that if Trump got into office and he did a bad job, it'd be like we're heading toward the cliff, just as we'd be heading toward the cliff with Hillary Clinton. But with Donald Trump, there would be no break right. because no Republican would be elected after Donald Trump, if he did as bad of a right. job as, that many people anticipated, myself included, in the primaries. I right. remember saying, like, I do, I think we deserve to lose if we run him in the primaries. Yeah. Of course, when he was against Hillary Clinton, I mean, listen, come on, you just have to take the free shots when you're given them. People yeah. thought Hillary Clinton, though, was ultimately a politician, right? That's what people didn't like her. They thought she's a politician. Uh, but as leftists go, relatively moderate. You know, that's the thing with Hillary Clinton. Yeah. This idea, she wasn't super, far, she wasn't, there was Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton. Yeah. Trump, on the other hand, people also thought, a lot of people think because he says bad words, that he's somehow extreme. He was actually seen as really pretty moderate and not that conservative. So a lot of conservatives weren't big fans of Trump. As a matter of fact, I think you'll be surprised when you look at those voting blocks, evangelicals voted for Trump because they had to, but not all of them. Probably, likely fewer in a lot of municipalities, but you saw a lot of union voters who would have typically yeah. gone Democrat, the blue dogs, go for oh, Donald yeah. Trump. Hmm. So a lot of those people held their noses, though, the evangel- the Christians, the true conservatives, and voted for Trump because Hillary Clinton was such an insufferable b- That's really why. <laughs> But now in 2020, we're choosing between Donald Trump, who's been really pretty conservative, if you look at him as a president, outside of the the trade issues. And pretty good. And all Democrats, who have swung so far to the left, their right nut hasn't seen them in a month. God. (laughs) That hurts. (laughs) It's not that literal. Uh, We know they want abortion up to 40 weeks, 70% tax rates, as you just saw, completely socialized health care. They want to destroy our economy on principle versus Donald Trump, who has done well by nearly all metrics available to us at this point, besides tweeting mean words, some of which are misspelled, let's be honest. But outside of that, he's done pretty well. The choice in 2020, when they say it's stark, they're like, we think there's a stark contrast between the Democrats and Donald Trump. It is. But in a positive way for Trump, because these gifts that the Democrats keep giving him. So when Republicans say that we need to be more moderate, this is something people have to like, hey, listen, yeah. we need a more moderate Republican Party. We need to come yeah. to the middle. I go, hold on a second. Look how far the left is going. Don't stare a gift horse in the mouth. We're going to be back here with Gavin McInnes after this. Ooh. <laughs> Accidents happen. Life happens. Get covered at LouderLiberty.com with plans starting at $1.99 a month. Hi, I'm Betty, and Mug Club allows me to be a stay-at-home dog, so I can do all the things I'm most passionate about, like fighting pots. Come here, you punk. Wait till I get a hold of you. You'll rule the day you ever heard the name Betty Crowder. Thanks, Mug Club. a victim. Try the Wolther. You'll be glad you did. And I don't want nobody. Want nobody. And I don't want nobody. You got that right. I, I don't want just nobody. Is that I think that's Uncle Phil in that song. Oh, yeah. uh, really happy to have our next guest on. Yeah. Longtime friend of the show. A lot of people have been asking for him to be on the show. Obviously, I've been speaking with him uh, not necessarily on the show. And he will be here live in studio oh. for several days next week. Not as a guest, but as third oh. chair, as an active contributor here at Lotto with Crowder. Oh. You can uh, follow right now. Uh, go and support him at defendgavin.com. Yeah. Uh, I guess a recently unemployed talk show host, but uh, comedian extraordinaire. Gavin McInnes, how are you, sir? I'm pretty good. How are you doing? I'm doing. I'm doing okay, thank you. This is a more casual Gavin than we're used to seeing. I don't think I've ever seen you in a white T-shirt. You usually did the falling down outfit. Yeah, my life has been destroyed. So uh, I'm emptying my bank account on this lawsuit. I'm unemployed. Um, I don't really have anything going on, thanks to the SPLC. So, okay, there, there's a lot to unpack there, and uh, I want you to take the initiative because I don't want to go anywhere that we're not supposed to. 
the SPLC, you're suing them, correct? That's defendgavin.com. Tell me what's going on with that exactly. Well, they set their sights on me around when Trump won and the Proud Boys. And I, I think their beef is, well, I think the way the SPLC works is they realize that calling everyone a Nazi makes for good money. Because yes. they scare everyone into thinking that America, you look at their hate map and it's just, it looks like someone barfed thumbtacks onto a map. <laughs> we have an actual Man, physical I'm, brochure that they handed out at a train station. I didn't know that they actually, and it, I, I didn't believe the map until I looked it up online to corroborate. It's 100% true. Oh, the criteria to be on this map is stunning. I mean, if, if there is one woman, Jennifer Morse, who uh, she's for man woman adoption before gay adoption. Yeah. That means she wants all homosexuals to die and will kill them tomorrow yeah. in their oh. book. And so <laughs> some of them are just churches, by Shocking. the way. Some of them are actually just churches. But yeah, go ahead. Christians, conservatives, they have a, a blind spot for jihad, which I don't quite get. The mm -hmm. only time you see Muslims on their list is Ayan Hirsi Ali for saying I'm kind of over my religion after they cut off my clitoris. And, uh, yeah. and Majid Nawaz, who went from radical extremist to moderate. And so they called him an anti-Muslim extremist, for which he sued them and won. It would seem like um, one would kind of leave the faith w when you lose your clitoris, as you put it. And it would seem as though the, the Southern Poverty Law Center should be more concerned with poor people who don't have clitorises. Yeah, it's really odd to, to give Islam a pass, especially when your whole thing is Nazis and anti-Semitism. If you're looking for anti-Semitism, wear a yarmulke around Paris. <laughs> wear a yarmulke. <laughs> in a predominantly Muslim neighborhood and see how many high fives you get. <laughs> You'll get a lot more than walking through the Catskills or Alabama for that matter. Well, I've, I've talked about this before. I think that uh, if you look at modern is it, countries that have Islamic rule, not every Muslim in the United States, okay, we have to preface it with that, but any country that has Islamic rule, it would certainly be more comparable to the worldview, to the ideology, the philosophy of Nazism than uh, free enterprise, the free liberty we see in the United States. It, it would be something that could not be argued with, yet they want to label places here Nazis and give it a pass. I really mean, in the very literal sense, if you look at Islam, if you look at Islamic, Islamically run countries, they don't like the Jews. They want to see them completely uh, eviscerated from the map. Yeah, well, they'll carry signs that say, I love Hitler at, at these at, at Muslim rallies. <laughs> they, they, the Protocols of Zion does very well in the Middle East. It's it's pretty strange. And, and you look at their definition of, of extremism and, and Nazi and, and with Proud Boys, they would say white nationalist all the time. And I, and I would get lawyer letters and send it not just to the SPLC, but to media. So media goes, OK, OK, I don't want to get sued. Uh, far right. And you go far right. I mean, I'm I'm against the drug war. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, pro gay. I'm pro Israel. How am I far right? But to them and when I say them, I mean the left these days here in clown world. If you're not 100 percent with us. You're 100% against us. Right. So the people that end up on this Nazi list, like with the SPLC, the ex extremists include Penn Carson, Laura Ingram, <laughs> Janine Pirro. I, it would definitely include a 2004 Bill Clinton it who was against would. gay marriage. Yeah. Or an Obama or a Hillary from back then. Who Matter of fact, the only president who could not be included for his stance on gay marriage upon entering office would be Donald Trump. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's the ultimate irony. No, but, but but you are correct. And it really is. Uh, it's terrifying, especially when you consider that the SPLC is one of the main. I don't I guess you would say one of the main seats on those, this board of directors that YouTube has in determining content guidelines. A lot of people don't know that the SPLC are used as a reference, as a guide for YouTube when determining what should be flagged, what should be considered hate speech. That's what I want to get into in Discovery. I want to get into exactly who they're influencing, who they're telling. It's, it's sort of a form of extortion like Al Sharpton does where he goes into an organization and says, either let me be in control of who does what or I'm going to call you racist and you'll be in big trouble. Right. So they, and they just keep accruing more power and more money. Money and power are the same thing. And they keep accruing all this money and power until they control social media. And, you know, in an age when newspapers are dying, controlling social media is controlling the national discussion. Right. So in a way, they're kind of trying to take over America. They want to be judge, jury, and executioner and decide who gets a job, who can do business, like Jennifer Morris getting a call from her bank. And at the same time, their judgment system seems to be totally random. I call it Becky, like a mean girl in high school. They had a headline that I talked about in my press conference where they go, you want bigots, Gavin? This is how you get bigots. 
And, and you're like, you're, you're taking over the Magna Carta. You're the, you're the new ju- judicial system, and you talk like that? That's what a, a strange combination. I thought you were doing your uh, Alexandria Nina Pinta Santa Maria Cortez impression right there. I was, I was tricked for a second. She said, the Green New Deal, going to guarantee jobs. What? How do you guarantee just, jobs? Yeah. She, she said, uh, every time I listen to her, I just sounds like one of that, those annoying college students who was kind of hot and she didn't like that she was hot because she wanted more substance. So she shaved her head <laughs> and started talking about politics, but you can still see that she's a nine. Right. And she's like, no, I'm not a pretty girl. I'm like a revolutionary. <laughs> right. And then she, like she, on, on uh, Trump's state of the union, she said, I just thought it was really morose. And you're like, what? It, I understand if you don't like Trump, but morose, morose, what? I think she thinks the word morose means moronic. Yeah, I, I, you know, and it's funny that you mentioned that. I, I thought at first, well, let me give her the benefit of the doubt. Maybe it's when he was referring to your abortion policies there, AOC. But I don't think, I think that was lost on her. She's just morose. And it's like, what are you, what are you, an emo kid at a census fail concert? No, I think you're right. She wants to be more substantive. Look at my beret, but you get a couple of Smirnoff ices in her and she's dancing on the rooftop as we've seen. Um, this is also, it's defendgavin.com. I want to get into your suit specifically. But it's interesting that you mentioned, you know, they want to control social media. Jack Dorsey was just on Joe Rogan's show recently. And I was surprised, obviously, I've, I've been on Joe Rogan's show, he's been on this show, consider him a friend of the show. Surprised how soft um, that interview was. Jack Dorsey evaded a lot c- compared to how your interview went on Joe Rogan or, or my interview went. And he was talking, for example, about Brexit. And he said, you know, we've realized there's, there's a problem on, um, I think we'll do a rebuttal to this next week because it's a three-hour show and a lot of people didn't really get to see what was going on there. But at Jack, one point, Jack Dorsey said, for example, Brexit, I realized that Twitter was really amplifying all these reasons to leave. And if you were on Twitter, all you would see are reasons to leave. And there wasn't really a a discussion about reasons to stay. And I was saying, well, hold on a second. That's because it's on every single mainstream news outlet. The the, the scales are a little bit tipped because people who have never been allowed a voice before, for example, with this show compared to ABC, NBC, CBS, Comedy Central, there's one alternative. Uh, The same thing happens with Brexit. And he... It was lost on him, and Joe didn't follow up on that. Um, so I wonder if you had watched that interview at all or, or what your opinions are on, on, on Jack Dorsey. I was on InfoWars uh, yesterday, I think it was, and Alex okay. Jones was going off about Joe Rogan saying that Joe is, is taking money from Twitter and he's not telling anyone about it. And I want to be on Joe Rogan really bad to help raise money for this case. So I I was like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> he's not so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard anything about that. <laughs> I don't know how one would get money. I mean, I will say this. We get money from YouTube when the videos aren't demonetized. So I think it's somewhere between 30 and 40% of our videos. So we got that big yeah. YouTube money. You know, we're honest about it. Yeah, I've been demonetized. SPLC got me demonetized. I can't do Google AdSense. So all my videos are free. I, I encourage people to rip off my YouTube content because <laughs> I know I'm going to be shut down any second now. But I'm glad what you said something really interesting about how the the left thinks that social media got, you know, Trump elected or Brexit to happen. Yeah. No, Jack Dorsey specifically. The yeah. people got that to happen. You we're all trying to leave City Field after a Mets game and you've closed off all the doors. You closed off mainstream media. You closed off all these different avenues. And the only door that was open was social media. So yeah, we all came out that door. That's not the door's fault. That's it's our only option. You know, when Trump held up his phone in Florida and went like that and we saw 80,000 people in the stands, we went, holy crap, we're being lied to. This guy's really popular. Right. If he hadn't done that, we wouldn't have known. That's not Twitter's fault. Right. And it, Hillary Clinton held up her BlackBerry at the high school uh, basketball court and it was about two, I don't know, two about center court. And she said, look, and we said, well, this seems about right. We think that New York Times 99% projection seems a little bit generous at this point. So <laughs> yeah. why have they, you mentioned the, the Southern Poverty Law Center having targeted you specifically. How, how so? Because they've targeted a lot of conservatives, but uh, what do you mean and how are you uh, going about this legally for people who don't know? Again, it's defendgavin.com. Well, you can find the complaint online and it, it is very involved. It's incredibly well written. It was Ron Coleman, a, a free speech lawyer who, who went to the Supreme Court with a ban, the slants, because they were they, they wouldn't couldn't trademark their name. Right. And he won that case. Uh, it's, it's incredibly well written. But they I know that it, that they targeted me because you look at the articles and it came out of nowhere and then it was just boom, 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 boom. Post after post after post after post. And the media is so mentally obese. They're so incurious and lazy that every single time they'd mention me or the Proud Boys, 
They'd mention labeled as an extremist, labeled as a hate group, and it just becomes fact. It's funny because curious guys like you and I who are in the fray, we wrote off the SPLC a long time ago. Right. We, like, we laugh at them, the ADL, the Washington Post, CNN. They, they had credibility. Even the New York Times is hanging by a thread. Right. But then you talk to other people who don't, aren't news junkies, and they go, oh, my God, the SPLC. <laughs> they know what they're talking about, man. That's the Southern Poverty Law Center. Yeah. They're experts. They have and law go, in the name. It, it, they help the Southern poverty. <laughs> that billion dollar corporation is helping with the poverty. And they're fighting the hate. Hate's everywhere. Hate's on the rise. Right. It's empowered in the age of Trump. It was always lying there, looming in the shadows. And then Trump got on, after Charlottesville, Trump got on the mic and said, Okay, hate, you can come out now. And they was, it was like the day after. They all came out and the sun seemed really bright. You know when you do coke all night in a bar and you find the, the owner lets you out at 9 a.m. And you're like, wow, it's really bright out here. I, I don't came know. Out like that. I also don't know why the, the voice, it sounded like the uh, the person calling a, uh, a Jack Dempsey fight. Okay, hate, you can come out now. We're in round four. <laughs> that's, what, that's where they are. They're in the 20s. In fact, I, I was just reading about Jack Dempsey. We talked about him before. Yeah, he's But great. there was a big fight with this guy. What the hell was oh, his name? Oh, uh, Primo Willis. Carnera. No, no, it was a black guy. I think his name was Willis or Wills. And um, promoters didn't want to take the fight because they knew it would be Jack Dempsey versus a black guy. And it would be seen as a racial thing, black, white. And then everyone would talk about race all the time. And so even back then, they were like, ah, I don't want to get into the racial thing. I don't want to be called racist. It's boring. And let's just fight a different guy. Right. Because the social justice warriors of the 20s but will he, <laughs> take this fight into identity politics. But at that point, they're like, I mean, I mean, we won't let them use the drinking fountains, but I just don't want to get into it, you know, publicly right now. I mean, let's be, let's be honest, Lou. <laughs> I don't want to talk to the drinking fountains. Let's just drop it, okay? Bugsy, yes. <laughs> take it to public. Right. But yeah, that's who they think Trump is. Like, they think when he says, make America great again, he wants... You're a bum, Charlie. This is a this is a New York. I want back the right. one where you can't. The Negroes aren't playing baseball. No apple pie for you. You go to the end of the t- apple pie line, and even then, if there's some, you'll be lucky to have it. Yeah, I know. It really is uh, something. I think the reason they want to say that is because uh, a significant percentage of people who voted for Barack Obama voted for Trump. You can see that with the Hodge twins who are here today. Just the numbers don't add up, and so they have to say, "Well, really, people voted for Barack Obama, but that that hate was lurking beneath the surface to try and discount the fact that a lot of people were willing to overlook some shortcomings to have the first black president." I think that's a component to it. That's just opinion. Um, but they've been going after you for a long time, and like I said, the, the, the proof that it's concerted—that's what always bothers me. Like Alex Jones, I, I, I agree with Alex Jones on very little, and I think sometimes he's gone too far. And I've talked about that. And he's been on this show, and I've been on his show. But there is no denying that the deplatforming occurred immediately in quick succession. You can't say that that's a coincidence at that point. No. No, the reason that they're out to get me is because I'm effective. The reason they are out to get the Proud Boys is because it's a popular movement. And in both cases, they are red-pilling young people and getting them on the Trump train. And that's their worst nightmare. So they knowingly lie. I don't believe the left thinks that the people they call Nazis are Nazis. In fact, did I ever tell you this story? At my NYU talk, I came out after I'd been pepper sprayed for being a Nazi. I remember that. I came out, I grabbed the mic and I said, we got three problems with this country. The Negro, the woman, and the Jew. And everyone just went, including all the protesters, their jaws hit the floor. And then of course I said, just kidding, just kidding. I'm not that guy. But why did your jaws drop? Because you pepper sprayed me because you thought I was that guy. But then I start talking like that guy and you all have a heart attack. So I don't believe that you believe that everyone's, you know, these evil bigots. Like with the Catholic school kids, did they really think that there was this beautiful indigenous ceremony? And these mega kids go, this is gay. And just start kicking over. <laughs> just kick him in the face <laughs> through his drum. Through his whale skin <laughs> drum. Like, this is actually a funeral. We're having a funeral here in this teepee. Oh, we're having a funeral. Where? Shove. Yeah. Smash goes the peace pipe. I mean, <laughs> do you really think that's what goes on? I, I, you know, I, and do we really think that, uh, I forget, what's his name? Phil? What? Jussie. What? No, it was Phil. What was the, what was the, uh, the, the Native American? I keep forgetting his name. Uh. 
That's, Nathan Phillips. Oh, Nathan Phillips. Do, does that, does that, did anyone actually think? I think it was uh, 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 the guy from uh, National. I think it was Bill Crystal. I could be wrong. But someone like that said, you know, he's a, an example of what America can be. I'm going, do we really think this guy's a wise sage? Like, even if you think those kids are douchey because it's a trucker hat, and you know, let's go with that. Fine. Do we really think that this guy is any kind of example of how to act as a grown adult in any capacity? Do we have to pretend that? Uh, I believe he was a refrigerator technician. For the military, Went who was twice. then taken out <laughs> for being incompetent and terrible at fixing refrigerators, not exactly the hero that we. He's not, not the hero we need. He's the hero we want. I don't hey, understand. Hey, 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 hey. Like the, it was in Halifax where they were accused of disrupting an in, indigenous ceremony, and it was just a screw Canada rally on Canada Day, and. The, the one leading it was an equally uh, bad representation of, of Indians, and she called herself Chief Grizzly Mama. And then the head of Canada's Foreign Affairs goes, I would like to apologize to Chief Grizzly Mama. We're so – it's like, dude, Google it. There's no Indian chief called Chief Grizzly Mama. And why would you, do the, why why would you do the cross? What's happening here? These, they were pantheistic society. That's why they didn't use the wheel. They just said, hey, why, is the wa why does water exist? Because the gods say water exists. And why is the sky blue? Because the gods of the sky make it blue. It took a Christian to come over and go, uh, actually, we've been encouraged to examine our surroundings and create critical theory. Um, not a big fan of the Native American culture, in case you can't tell. So what are you doing? I'm a big you are, oh, that's right. Sorry, I'm sorry. Your wife. Yeah. Yeah. That's I'm, I love Native so much, I made three. That's true. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but uh, she's not hitting, hit, hit, hitting a, a snare drum made of whale skin, I imagine. She seems pretty, pretty Americanized slash Canadianized. Sure, sure. But they all still go to powwows and all, do all that stuff. Fancy dancers and funerals and with the, the peyote and the teepee and sweat lodges. Yeah. Jesus, you've got a sweat lodge. It is Brutal. Anyway, we're getting off topic here. Um, Someone SPLC, died in a sweat lodge. That was a, there was a cult thing where some white guy tried to do it, and then a bunch of people died because he didn't he didn't leave the vent hole like the teepee. Well, that's my fear. When I'm in it, I'm like, you guys aren't doctors. How do you know that this is a reasonable amount of heat? Because it feels a little excessive. How do you know why we're not literally baking in here? <laughs> they, they don't. Can we get a doctor to our temperatures? Yeah, they have no idea. Okay, so defendgavin.com. What is it that you are specific? Is it a, are you filing for um, information exactly? Is this a petition for information? Or are you actually at the suing stage? Uh, I think it's called tortious interference. I'm not that well-versed in, in legality. But you, the, the big picture is I'm doing it for everyone else. I'm right. doing it for, like, take Ayan Hirsi Ali, right? She dares to point out things about radical Islam. She does a movie with... Uh, uh, with that Van Theo Van Gogh, he gets murdered because of the movie, and the SPLC pushes this anti-Muslim extremist. Shit, so she needs round-the-clock security, which is real expensive. Yeah. I think it's about two grand a day. So we got six hundred grand a year. I don't know if she has to pay that, but whatever she has to pay, it's 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 a lot of money, and it's because of labels like this. I mean, they they make this fake America that's full of bigots because it pays money, but then these bigots that they they stick the label on have to suffer. And, and have their lives ruined. Right. And, and it's, it's, it's wrong, and it's a terrible depiction of America. Like this whole hate has no home here, this whole Antifa view of the world. Can you imagine just walking through life thinking 50% of the country are Klansmen? That's a racist. That's a racist. That's an anti-Semite. That's a homophobe. Well, You've never met one, but you hear they're everywhere. Well, that's not just, true. If you, if you yeah. live in Virginia, there's a solid chance you can point in any direction and there's a Klansman <laughs> and or blackface. And he's running your, your state. <laughs> um, but it's, 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 it's the one place. It's Virginia as your governor, blackface and or KKK. I don't even know which one is more offensive. No, I think, uh, I think it's a very important point that not everyone has the kind of platform or has, has had the kind of reach that you do. And, uh, it's important. We talked about this with Charles Hermes in UTA with the students there who are, who are suffering, the students who are silenced by professors who fail them. You know, it's, it's s someone has to do something. A lot of people say someone has to do something. You're doing something and you're going to be doing more here next week here in third chair. Uh, uh, taking an active role here in the show. It's defendgavin.com. And you know one thing I will say too? I know a lot of conservatives, this is something that I see a lot of. Conservatives don't all have to be the same. It's okay. Yeah, you're ed edgier. I hate that word, but edgier than maybe someone else who might be mainstream conservative. That's okay. I don't have to share the same opinions as every other conservative, but we do need to band together and understand the size of the enemy that we're facing right now. And the SPLC is a huge one, especially when you see how deep their tentacles reach into places like YouTube and potentially Twitter. So uh, defendgavin.com. Hey, Gavin, looking forward to uh, seeing you here next week, brother. 
Rock on, buddy. Let's have fun. Accidents happen. Life happens. Get covered by Liberty Health Share. Go to SaveWithLiberty.com today. You know, they're parodies of themselves. And you know what? I think that the right is ultimately just fangirls and boys of the left, and they're curious about progressives because they know we've got better ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Awarded Best News and Cultural Channel 2017. Real talk. Real turks. Become a TYT member today to watch all exclusive content. Go to TYT.com to support real progress. Well, that one, the, uh, the Hodge twin. Sank like a stone, but my hair is still dry. Um, I think uh, they're actually in the green room right now. They went to go yeah, have keep a, the uh, time. what they call last time a white guy beer. I'm like, it was his fat tire. Oh, like, oh you I'm serious? I'm feeling that. I'm like, it's just a fat tire. It's just the average five and a half percent beer. <laughs> I think they feel it more because, uh, well, actually, they would feel it less because they're so lean. Typically, if, you're, if you have more muscle mass, you feel beer less. But it's they're the very African healthy. origins. Do, do African people, do black people not process? I don't know. I'm just racist. I know, Nate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of which, not that we are, but of course, uh, we, we, we released some prank calls this week. And by the way, next yeah. week, I think there is no show Monday because we're working on a hidden camera uh, oh. video here that, that could be the biggest thing we've ever done, or it could be a total bust. You never know. That's kind of what happened with Antifa. Um, so forgive us if we're not around uh, Monday with the show. But we did prank calls this Monday. And of course, there was a man who we spoke with. A lot of people were asking about mm -hmm. him. A lot of people thought we faked it, that, that it was nope. a parody of a black person a, in a racist caricature, our good friend Otis. Yeah. It is not at all. As a matter of fact, Otis called us back and left a voicemail. I think you have it, right? I do. We it up? This me, is, this is up. the voicemail from Otis. Are you ready? Yep. Here we go. I'm ready. Hey, listen, um, <laughs> you bigots, <laughs> you <laughs> racists. I got in touch with the police. I have this number. No, you didn't. And somebody will be contacting you. Call my restaurant again and don't hide behind a phone call. Come and see me, you punk <laughs> mother <laughs> when I put a hot steel in your ass. Okay, a couple <laughs> things there. First off, I've always heard the term cold steel and hot lead. I think he mixed. Oh, I mean, yeah, I'm sure. sure technically you can say hot steel. You got um, excited. He, he called us bigots. <laughs> <laughs> but he just, he, he had just imme immediately proceeded to call us fat <laughs> <laughs> And he said, I've called the cops and then threatened to kill us. Otis, you're getting us all wrong, man. We want yeah. what's best for you. <laughs> The black business people. Um, so hopefully there's a little more Otis in the future. Otis, if you're out there, we would love to speak with you. You can be a guest on the show. <laughs> I just I couldn't believe it. I don't, I don't know Sincere. how he got our number. And I've been getting lately. Anyone ever get this this tinnitus uh, in their ear? Yeah, I found out time. recently that I have a sleeping disorder. Um, so that's nice. So this is the clothing. That, that, that usually now we start off the third segment. It usually goes into some people. When is he going to get to the moving and inspirational part? Um, Obviously, if you're a Mug Club member and you, and you watch the uh, the full life advice segments, you kind of already know this, but uh, uh, maybe some of you don't. First off, I just want to let you know I'm, I'm so grateful for the overwhelming support that uh, I've received from everyone, particularly as it relates to when I took a break um, for the first time in, in, in years and was kind of placing an emphasis on my health for a while. Um, and it, it just kind of it came back up recently because, I'm, like I said, I'm about 60% there. I had a couple people recognize me. Um, in one morning, as a matter of fact, shout out to Mac, shout out to Katrina, black fan. I gave a, we got genuinely have a lot of black fans. We do. Um, yeah. And then there was a guy. This was at a, a gas station where I was just getting uh, getting a coffee, 
and he said, hey, 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 Stephen, I'm a fan. I hope you feel better soon. And he shook my hand. And the thing is, you know, I've talked about this and it's, it's a lot of people make it out to be bigger than it is, but it is exhausting. I have fibromyalgia and I have a wrist injury. Funny enough from that Rocky comeback video that we did a while back, if you go, I was hitting the bag without any wraps because we had to use these classic boxing gloves. And I sprained my wrist, but it's been about five weeks and it really hurts. And uh, when he shook my hand saying, I hope you feel better, it hurts so bad. Oh, like man. nothing hurts my hand more than either like lifting a milk jug or uh, someone shaking your hand. And he was very nice about it, uh, which has just kind of brought up so, so, some emotions from before the break. I, I was, I'm very grateful for the support because I'll tell you this, I was, I was terrified. Uh, I was terrified before we took that break that, that I'd, I'd lose a lot of you, that you'd be angry, uh, that you'd think I was lazy or, or scared or there's this constant fear that people always have. I think we all have this fear that we're, we're not enough. So to see support, and to get the emails and comments and even people who are uploading videos telling me how you've been praying and how you'll be waiting, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's not something that a lot of people get to experience. But sometimes all of this, it, um, it, it scares me too. And I'd be doing you all of this service if I weren't honest about it, everything that's kind of, uh, you know, that's been happening with myself because I feel as though I've, you've let me into your life and I'm very grateful for that. Uh, and sometimes I need to clarify some of these uh, communications. And uh, I, I get a lot of emails. And if you read these life advice, uh, you see the life advice shows where we read emails. And this is something that someone else said at this gas station. I asked if I could talk about it, but they didn't want me to use their name. So I'm trying to, whenever that happens, I try to tiptoe around it. Said that, oh, my, I, my son watches you and I really use you as a, as a role model. Um, and I know that when I, me saying that is like a Trump humble brag, like they said the best. Uh, I, the reason I bring it up is actually it's because I'm not. I want to make something really clear. And we get a lot of these in the life advice emails, like just because we're offering advice, me, Gerald, people who are here, I am not a role model. I have never wanted to be a role model. I've never claimed to be one. And I'm certainly not a good one. I want to make sure that is as clear as I can be. But I am something else. I'm an example. And the difference, I think, is an important one. And I think it's an important one for everyone to learn. Because um, one of those things is authentic. And one of those is a construct. A role model is a construct often of, it could be from the media, advertising, or some glorified self-aggrandizement. Uh, sometimes it's a construct by you of someone or something that you may think you want to emulate or you think that you want to be. An example, on the other hand, is something that everyone can be and something everyone should be. A role model is an ideal that no one can live up to. An example is something or someone tangible that all of us can use to improve ourselves. So see, you can hold yourself up as an example for someone in order to help them optimize their life without portraying yours as something to emulate or certainly without portraying yours as perfection. That's what I think really bothers me about this. Recently, uh, I've been the example of a cautionary tale of what not to do as it relates to values, priorities, actions. I let my health fall by the wayside. I walked too close to the edge. I was stupid. I pushed too hard. I lived too fast. That's not something you want to model yourselves after, okay? But it is an example you can use. And that's a role I've learned to embrace. And it's one that I think all of us not only can be, it's, it's something that all of us are. Uh, it's something we're all burdened with, for better or worse, whether you like it or not. We are all an example to everyone around us to, in some capacity, to someone around us in a very important capacity. Our words, our decisions, our actions. You may not know it, but someone right now is looking to you as an example. I guarantee it. And if you or I do myself a disservice of setting out to be a role model, that's why I get really uncomfortable when someone says that or we get these emails. If, if we set out to even attempt to achieve becoming a role model, we run the risk of assuming that we can do no wrong of assuming the moral high ground to ourselves without verifying. Carrying the mantle of role model breeds carelessness. And I think that's why it's a term I hate so much. But if you think of yourself as an example, it breeds thoughtfulness. Are you in the right? Are you standing on the moral high ground? Are you making the right decisions? It's why the whole DNC, particularly Nina, Mina, Santa Maria, Pinta, Cortez, I know I misspoke, so I'm like, look, your example of how to speak poorly, you dumbass. Yeah, it was Nina, Pinta, Santa Maria, Cortez. Uh, that's why she aggravates me so much. She says she doesn't want to be bogged down. Recently, we, we played this clip. She doesn't want to be bogged down with the technicalities and facts. These were her words, but more so wants to focus on doing the moral thing. That's someone who thinks of themselves as a role model. 
That's someone who's already branded themselves with that mark. Otherwise, how, how do you know what the moral thing is? Well, guess what? It starts with facts. It starts with the technicalities over which Nina Pinta Santa Maria so gleefully wants to gloss. It starts and it ends with truth. Now, someone who understands that they are an example as opposed to a role model, they require of themselves facts, the technical, the ugly, the mundane. They get bogged down in boredom and the daily slog. Why? Because they know that they're a potential example and they hope to get it right. They want to get it right. They don't assume that they have it right. The only way to get it right, it comes down to what we talk about every day on this show. It comes down to truth. So everyone watching, everyone listening right now, understand and think about who this might be. That to someone in your life, I don't know who it is, uh, could be lots of people. Think about them. Think about the people to whom you are a potential example. Because we are all examples, period. You're not a role model. You'll never be a role model. There is no one on this earth right now who is a role model. But what kind of example are you going to be? Someone who gets it right, someone who at least tries, someone who seeks truth, or are you going to assume yourself the moral high ground in being a role model? Are you just going to be another cautionary tale? It's a decision I think we all have to make this week, and it's an important one. See you next week.